Mary Magdalene interviews Jesus on the subject of resistance to humility. The interview took place in Wondai, Queensland, Australia, on the 5th of September, 2012. This is session five. Humility. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so then for this um, person who's not humble, who's seeking um, to avoid a lot of things through getting glory and attention, um, what effects can it have on the people that they are interacting with? You mentioned that there can be this addictive relationship form, but say with children or other people in their environment, what kind of things does it create? Well, generally, the people who are seeking these kind of emotions are very narcissistic. They, they have a very self-absorbed life and lead a very self-absorbed life. So if they have children, for example, the children will feel very neglected um, and, and not very honoured. And often the children will grow up with exactly the same emotion, of course, mm -hmm. that the parent now uh, has been seeking all of its life. And, and the sad thing about it is that these kind of people generally can't hold relationships well, they can't hold friendships well. You know, everything in their life, aside from the glory or attention or approval they get, is pretty much a mess. And, they're, and, they're, and this is why many people who have very public lives have, have very messy private lives. Because, because there are a whole heap of addictions supporting their public life that they don't get met in private. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, oftentimes it, there's a lot of unhappiness in their life, which then causes them to, to um, seek even these things even more. And eventually uh, they finish up oftentimes when they pass, by the time they pass, they feel very alone because mm -hmm. the reality is very few people can support them, uh, in, emotionally support them. Mm. In, throughout their life, mm. it's very hard for a narcissistic person to continue getting friends, more f you know, new friends, new friends, new friends, and chewing up friends yeah. uh, like they're going out of fashion, without sooner or later uh, ending up with very, very few friends as mm. a result, mm. Mm. And or people who are just friends because of some addiction that is met. Yeah, mm. sure. Mm. You mentioned earlier about the example of the narcissistic singer, mm -hmm. and um, you were saying those kinds of people are quite unpleasant to be around. Mm -hmm. And um, it occurred to me that that's because you don't want to enter an addictive relationship with them, so you feel it as a demand or an oppressive feeling to be around. Whereas them. their fans would love to be around them yes. for exactly for, because of there would be a codependent addiction that gets met inside of the fans, you mm. know, by by having a, some kind of association with that person. And so their fans would actually feel very different to what I feel about being with the same person. And and that led me to think about a child of that that sort of a person. They obviously don't enter the world seeking an addictive relationship, so they must also feel quite similar. They will feel very similar. The child will find it very difficult to have a relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very okay. difficult to have a fulfilling relationship. And I imagine feel quite oppressed. Feel oppressed, uh, also neglected, uh, unloved, unwanted, uncared for. Yes, mm. many, many different emotions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And this is why many of the children of you know, people who have been wealthy, powerful or, or popular uh, have a lot of deep grief to go through before they can become stable emotionally. Yeah. yeah. And is that also why we often see substance abuse in uh, yes. those kinds of situations? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Substance abuse is often a result of, uh, you know, it's another layer of adding physical addictions to the process mm. besides the emotional. And, and avoiding the avoiding the oppression of the parent or the yes situation. trying to avoid the oppression of the parent so you want something to that helps you avoid the emotion of how unloved you feel mm -hmm. how unwanted you feel how how uh, pushed around and and uh, um, powerless you feel in the relationship mm. yeah okay mm. um, so it sounds like uh, in this set of resistances to humility that we only give of ourselves under very specific conditions if if i was a person in that state is is that true yes a, per, a person who's seeking power glory attention position approval is only ever going to give in a situation where they'll get those particular things so so in other words it's a it's a bartering system an emotional bartering system that they enter with every single individual and if you're not prepared to enter the barter with them that you, you'll never be their friend mm. That's the reality. They, they cannot love you, and they do not love anybody, actually. They only love the feeling 
of power, position, glory, attention, approval. Mm. That's what they love. So, so similar to how a person who's living in fear is made fear their God, then a person who's living in these things has made these things, glory, attention, approval, their God. Yes. And, and they'll do anything to, to get that glory, attention, approval. It's impossible to have a, a, a relationship with integrity with, the, with such a person because they will always sacrifice the relationship for, for some kind of attention, approval or power. Mm. And so it's impossible to have a fulfilling long-term relationship with the individual unless you're totally willing to do exactly what their addiction demands. Yeah. Mm. So if I had this set of injuries, mm -hmm. what would I need to do in order to reach a state of humility? Well, have very difficult injuries to release again to get to a state of humility because, you, because the addiction is usually firmly in place by the time the person's become an adult with these particular problems. Their world around them is tr trying to uh, loosen up this problem uh, and help them to feel it. But unfortunately, the addiction is demanding, no, I want to only create a life that will give me these particular results. And so it, it requires a lot of sincerity on the part of a person who's living this kind of a life to actually break down through this layer of fear, through the addiction and into the layer of fear that they have about feeling the underlying grief, the mm. fear about feeling the grief of, of powerlessness, the fear about feeling the grief of, of you know, being unwanted, the fear about feeling the grief that nobody notices me, mm. uh, you know, these kind of powerful grief from our childhood. Of course, there are also positions of untruth in the sense that um, the irony of life is that when we feel a sense of internal worth, we won't seek the worth externally. When we feel a sense of internal power, we won't ex seek the power externally. Mm -hmm. When we feel a sense of internal glory, we, where we, where we honour ourselves, we won't seek honour and glory externally. And so, you know, in the end, there is this healed position that we have to reach, an emotionally healed position, where we have a feeling or a sense of internal power, a sense of internal worth. And these particular feelings only come when we release the the opposite when we release the the opposite feeling that created this driving desire for these particular emotions to be fulfilled mm. Mm. so it's really acknowledging a lot of truth from what you're saying we need to at least open up to the fact that there's a different truth about what's um... yeah and unfortunately most people who are in such a condition don't open up to the truth until they've created a life that's been quite damaged and then they come to recognize some of the truth about how they created this damaged life and they then have some kind of self-reflection you know they have some kind of therapy or some kind of psychological help which helps them see the reason why they had such a desire for glory for example and the sacrifices that they were willing to make of their own self mm -hmm. and others to reach this pinnacle of glory and and uh, and then once they start seeing that they start seeing the emotion as a drug rather than just seeing the emotion as something that's good to have mm. so they start seeing the emotion as a problem that has caused the majority of their of their underlying problems that have been caused through this addiction and then they start working their way through it emotionally and it's rare for a person to consciously see that oh i'm seeking power and then to consciously work their way through their fear and in, uh, into their grief of how powerless they feel mm. without there being some kind of negative external effects in their life first. Yeah, because we've talked, we've given the example of someone seeking fame and glory in the wide, big wide world. Mm -hmm. But I, I also see that many... Um, many people set themselves up in positions of power, glory, respect and value in terms of their own family. Mm -hmm. They're the mm -hmm. head of the household, they're the, the, the father, the mother, the wise old grandparent mm -hmm. who has really created many of these things in a way that perhaps gives them less feedback about... It. Yes, and unfortunately, like we, we were in Brazil recently, and and both of us noticed there, didn't we? The yeah. the uh, the power of the mother, the yeah. matriarchal system there, which, where the mother believes that she everyone in the family has to eventually basically just do what she says or do what she wants, and and she's glorified and she's as glorified as this yes. beautiful woman as a result yes. of that. And the reason why is that she has inculcated into her children 
this very, very strong desire to please her. Mm -hmm. And so now nobody in her immediate environment confronts the desire generally because they all know that if they confront the desire, mum's going to be an angry ogre who might finish up <laughs> excommunicating them from the family if they're not careful. And, and so they always get themselves back into line. Now, such a person has no consciousness or awareness of how much what, what they are seeking through those addictive relationships. And they, like I said, they need to come to some personal awareness that such behaviour is unloving and uncalled for actually in a family. Mm -hmm. And then they need to go through this process of opening or becoming more aware that these emotions are, are driving them and what, what, what the underlying reason for the emotions driving them are. Now, of course, for a person to do that, they've already got to be fairly humble <laughs> before they can actually go and do something like that. They have to have some degree of humility to, to look at themselves. And it's rare for such a person to do that. And, you know, when we were in Brazil, we talked to some spirits who, who was, had passed into the spirit world. And I asked them where their families were and they couldn't find them. And so what they did was they adopted another family on earth so they could do the same thing to it, not asking them themselves the question, why has my family deserted me? They've all passed. You're like, yeah. Why have my family deserted me? Well, don't you think it's got something to do with how oppressive you are? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and uh, once they, we started talking about that with that group of spirits um, and sort of taking them through the process of what was actually happening, there was initially a lot of resistance, just like there would be with people on the earth in the same condition. Mm. Yeah. And so really the family is a place where we might breed these kinds of addictions in ourselves or in our children. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking now mm -hmm. of the favoured child, the golden child or the long wanted child, or the child that suddenly uh, they're born and they're already given a lot of power, attention mm. um, and glory. And, and many of these golden childs grow up being very narcissistic doing some very damaging things some even turn to rape and murder and other very damaging actions as a result of their you know being treated with this you know favoritism that that is developed within them yeah. so it's going to take a lot of humility for someone to really begin to look at themselves and look at what is the attention that others are giving me does mm -hmm. it give me a sense of feeling glorified or superior and yeah. Uh, or I suppose, what are the results in my family? If I've had a family, do I have children who uh, do substance abuse or are finding it difficult to, to live in their life? They would be maybe some of the indicators I would look for. Yeah, you say? but also um, I feel in these situations, uh, you get this sort of um, situation where you feel a, per a person who is truly humble feels a sense of when they're being honoured for something they have actually done mm -hmm. or whether they're being honoured in a worshipful way. Yes. And there is a very, very big difference between this worshipful honouring or glory or attention or power than, than being honoured for what you have actually achieved. Now, a person who's humble will accept being honoured for what they have actually achieved, but they would reject being honoured for things they have not achieved mm -hmm. right? and they actually would not agree with or enter into the codependent addiction emotionally for things that they have not achieved right? and they'd recognise, they'd also recognise the holes or the problems that they have in their own life or their own family or whatever it is as well. So, so when we're truly humble we may receive honour but it will be for what we've actually done not for what everyone imagines we've done right? or not and not for what everybody thinks we've done without any assistance and we'll honour the assistance we've received as well mm -hmm. if we're truly humble mm -hmm. so there are ways to see whether the honour that we're receiving or the glory or attention or approval we're receiving is actually based around a real emotion or whether it's based around some kind of addiction mm -hmm. when we become truly sensitive and humble will actually feel the dishonourable addiction uh, as, an, as, a, as a very sleazy feeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we're being drawn from or taken from in the interaction and we will find it very difficult to engage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.